Good evening. I'd like to welcome you to the Meet the Candidates Night for Elgin Mayor and City Council to be elected in the April 4th consolidated election. This forum is hosted by the League of Women Voters of the Elgin area. My name is Carol Grom, and I will be the moderator tonight. The League of Women Voters is a nonpartisan organization that works to empower voters and encourage informed participation in our democracy. One of the ways we do that is to hold candidate forums or events like this to provide voters an opportunity to hear the candidates running for election. The events sponsored by the League give candidates for local offices a chance to present information about themselves and their candidacy, background and skills, reasons for running for office, what they hope to accomplish if elected, and positions on various issues relevant to the office. All candidates in contested races were invited to participate. Each one was given the opportunity to fill out a candidate questionnaire on our website, and their written responses can be found by clicking on their name in the voter guide at lwvelginarea.org. The format for this evening will be different from past candidate forums. The candidates will have three minutes to introduce themselves. Then, instead of specific questions from the moderator and the audience, each will have two minutes to give their views on several topics. Each candidate will have the option to speak on all of the topics or to skip one if he chooses. This evening, you will have a chance to hear from the candidates for Elgin Mayor, Corey Dixon and David Captain, followed by the candidates for City Council. Our timekeeper in the front will show the candidates when they have one minute left, 30 seconds left, and when their time is up. We ask you, the audience members, to please silence all cell phones and remain silent and seated during the forum. This forum will be recorded and posted to the LWVEA YouTube channel, where it will be available for viewing via links on our website, lwvelginarea.org, and our Facebook page. Welcome to our candidates, way over there, and thank you for agreeing to participate tonight. Mr. Dixon, we will begin with your three-minute introduction. Yes. Can everyone hear me all right? Perfect, perfect. Hello, everyone. Uh, thank you for making the time this evening. Uh, as introduced, my name is Corey Dixon, and I'm a current city councilman. I want to say thank you to the League of Women Voters, to all of the candidates who were brave enough to throw their hat in the rings. That is not a, a, an easy feat. And also, thank you to uh, my opponent and Mr. Captain for being here this evening. Um, I'm born and raised here from Elgin. I attended school district U46 schools. I went to Larkin High School, but graduated from Elgin High School. After high school, I went on to obtain a bachelor's degree in business management and a master's degree in public administration with a concentration of government. After getting my master's degree, I began working for the state of Illinois, specifically for the Illinois Department of Human Services. And then I've now moved on to the Kane County Sheriff's Office, where I serve in the role of Senior Assistant Director of Administration. During my time on City Council, which has now been six years, I have been an advocate for residents. I've always placed them first. I've been an advocate for neighborhoods, always placing them first. I have made sure that we have stood up to our fiduciary responsibilities on city council and making sure that we're passing balanced budgets. I've made sure that the residents in this community always have contact and access to me whenever they have a question, no matter how large or how small. There's never been an issue in my entire time on city council where I did not give it the due attention that it deserves. And when prompted in giving a task for the city of Elgin, for the residents, I've made sure to follow through every single time. I am not a man of mixed words. I say what I mean, I mean what I say, and I execute when given the chance. 
So in me running for Elgin City Council, I'm looking forward to not just continuing to be a leader here in this city, I'm looking forward to being, having the opportunity to be even more efficient in the role of city government. When we think about our role in the city government, we are the elected body of the city. And there are things that we decide on on the day-to-day -day basis that aren't just the day-to-day -day things of paying the bills. We have an excellent city staff that already handles that. What we do, what we're really tasked with do, doing is executing on the vision of the city. And I am a visionary and with me running for Elgin City, running for mayor here, I think that Elgin can become the entertainment district of the entire Fox Valley. And I'm running on that, and I'm running here to execute. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Captain, your three minute introduction. Thank you, Carol, for uh, uh, in the league for uh, sponsoring this tonight. I'm Dave Captain. Uh, many of you know me, and uh, for those of you that don't, I've been a public servant in this community for almost 50 years. I served 30 years working as a public servant. I've been on a planning commission for six years. I was on a city council for six years. I've been mayor for 12 years. I've also been a part of a number of organizations in this community. I was a founding member of the Fox River Study Group, the Elgin Community Network, the, Elgin, uh, the Alignment Collaborative for Education, and I still serve on the boards for the, many of those organizations as well, as I'm the chairman for the Northwest Water Planning Association for five counties and serving over one million people in the Northwest suburbs. I'm also on the board for the, uh, Metropo uh, the uh, uh, Metro West Council of Government. As I sat here and I looked back at myself and uh, thought about my career, I, I went back and looked at what my core values were when I first ran for office in 2007. I believed in the right of a resident to communicate with his government. I believe in the public-private uh, public partnerships and intergovernmental relationships. I'm a fiscal conservative. I watch your money and I protect it like it's my own. I believe in diversity and growth and, uh, in both population and in the industries in the, community that, in the community that we build. I believe in strong public safety. Those original core values and beliefs have served me very well for uh, over half a decade. And I finished, fleshed out those things and my experience has made them better and broader. I believe a lot in what the, what the government can do, but I don't believe that government's the answer for everything. People are the answers. These core values have helped me bring safe neighborhoods and stability to this community and with well-planned, smart growth, while maintaining also a balanced budget, which is a difficult thing to do sometimes. These values have helped guide the city through some difficult times and, and will continue to guide them in the future. I plan to be part of, that, part of that process and part of helping this city move forward. I look out at the audience here and I see a diverse group of people. Elgin has changed a lot since I was a young fellow here. Over uh, 50 years ago, we talked about people moving to this community and said, what, what, what will their role be? What, will, what are they gonna do here? Are they gonna be a burden on this city? The people that have moved to this city in the last 20 years have been nothing but an asset. They've helped this city grow. They've helped this city become defined as a community in the entire northern region and the northwest part of the city. One of the things, or the part, part of the uh, suburbs, one of the things that's made a big difference, I think that Elgin has moved from saying, we want to be like Naperville, to saying Naperville starting to want to be like us. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I notice we still have some people standing in the back. I want to ask the audience, if you have an empty seat next to you, would you raise your hand, please? Okay. There are some empty seats if you folks want to move up and claim them. Put, put your hand back up for just a minute. Keep your hand raised. 
Okay, so you want to be wallflowers in the back? That's your choice. <laughs> okay, we'll wait just a second here while everybody sits down that wants to. Okay, now we're going to ask the candidates for their views on four pre-selected topics that were given to them in advance. The four topics for the mayoral candidates are economic development, budget priorities and funding, police and public safety, and vision for Elgin, long-term plans. Mr. Captain, what are your thoughts on economic development in Elgin? You have two minutes to give us all of your wonderful ideas and priorities. Thank you. Um, uh, the obligation, I believe the obligation of government in many roles is to build a foundation for people to be successful and for businesses to be successful. That includes, for, from our standpoint, from a government's governmental standpoint, we need to provide a safe community. We need to provide adequate water sewer, and uh, sewer service. We need to have clean streets. We need to have business-friendly business permitting processes. The partnerships we have created with the Chamber of Commerce, the DNA, Convention and Visitors Bureau, have resulted in a broad coverage of new businesses coming to Elgin for and uh, maintaining businesses that were thinking to leave Elgin. And that's an important part that we, we lose track of. It's not just new businesses coming. It's maintaining a, a relationship with businesses that have been here for years. The chamber has done a great job. The uh, groups that I listed have done a great job, but we've moved a little bit beyond that. Uh, a few years ago, the city council was tasked with providing education for this community. And one of the things that we did when I was mayor, I put together a summit that brought together business leaders, educational leaders, and out of that summit came a group called the Elgin of uh, the Alignment Collaborative for Education. The idea was to provide a steady workforce and an educated workforce to provide the businesses in this community that couldn't find workers. There was a disconnect between businesses and the education of educational system in our city. That group has helped provide a educated workforce that will make Elgin a strong community and our businesses strong for decades to come. I may not be here at the end of this. When we started it, I said this could take 20 years before we start seeing the fruits of those labors. But we're starting to see the beginnings now. And my future, my future, your future, and business futures in the city of Elgin will depend on those young, depend on those young people that come forward and become our educated, skilled labor force. Thank you, Mr. Captain. Uh, Mr. Dixon, what are your thoughts on economic development in Elgin? You have two minutes. Thank you. Economic development isn't what it was 10 years ago, 15 years ago, 20 years ago, and more. We can no longer allow and just wait on the market to correct things. We have to go out into the world, go out outside of Elgin, and bring the types of things that we want here into our community. We currently have the chamber, which does a great job the DNA that does a great job. Explore Elgin area that also does an excellent job. But they are on shoestring budgets to handle economic development for what is now the sixth largest city in the state of Illinois. And that is not good enough for us to become what we should be. And what we should be is the industry leaders in every field and every category when it comes to economic development. We get there by empowering those economic branches, by empowering our city staff. Now, when we talk about what we are as a community and what we are as a city, we have to think about what we're telling people outside of this community. Are we marketing ourselves to be what, to, to bring in the types of things that we want? And right now, we're currently not doing that at a scale that's efficient. So now we have people who brand Elgin as a community of what we were 30 years ago, and we're not that anymore. We're a different community. We have a low crime rate. It's not what it was in the 80s and in the 90s. And so we have to tell people that. We have to market that. We have to implore and push our economic development wings to go out there to make it happen, but they have to have our support. And if, when I'm elected mayor, I'm going to make sure that not only they have that support, but that 
I go alongside of them to make things happen. I've been able to, as a city councilman, I've been able to go out there and we just recruited a cannabis, a cannabis uh, grower building uh, business. And my time is stopping, so I'm gonna go ahead and finish. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Dixon. It'll be a brief sit down because the next topic is budget priorities and funding, and we're going to let you go first on this oh. one. Uh, over the next few years, um, we really have a budget deficit. Um, We've been, as much as we can be giving the diversity of revenue, we've been an economically, fiscally sound community. We haven't take to, taken any risk. Um, we haven't taken any major loss, but that's not the issue. The problem is normally in what we're not doing, what we're not going after. Um, over the next three years, the financial plan causes for about $14 million in uh, money that's going to be, have to be drawn from our reserves. In, in this year, uh, next year, 13, the next year after that, 18. These are budget deficits. And what we're facing right now is that we have recessive taxes. So sales tax, um, gas tax, um, hotel tax, all these taxes have continued to go up over the years. We have just hired 16 new people to come on to our city staff. Now we're talking legacy costs. So all of these things are indicator of what's going to happen if we don't continue to diversify, uh, diversify our income. And one of those things, no matter if you, as I was saying just a minute ago, no matter how you feel about cannabis, it's legal, it is out here in cities and communities around the country, uh, and definitely in Illinois, are taking advantage of it, and we don't have one dispensary. And But the communities that surround us, they certainly do. They're taking advantage of those additional tax revenues, while we have a very restrictive code that disallows this from, from happening. That is a problem. If we don't correct this, we're going to have continue to have these budget restraints if we don't diversify outside of what we're already doing. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Dixon. Mr. Captain, what are your thoughts on Thank budget you. priorities and funding? Um, we do have some budget priorities that we need to address. We have to keep up with street repairs that uh, uh, the city demands, the public demands. Uh, we used to depend on the riverboat to do that. They cannot fund that anymore. We have continued to meet our obligations to our unfunded mandates for lead service lines, uh, combined sewer separation, and our prior obligations for our, but for our uh, pensions. We, meet, we have to meet the needs of a growing community, but we do have the funding to do that. You're paying for it. As inflation is growing, the three primary sources of our funding are property tax, income tax, and sales tax. As inflation grows, you pay more in sales tax, you pay more in your property tax, because your home, the value goes up. You don't have to do anything. It's taken care of for us. That's an automatic back to the city of Elgin. This city will never be able to float. It's a big town, it's a big city, 115,000 people, a lot of industries. The marijuana business is not gonna solve our budget problems, trust me. The inflation sensitive uh, uh, taxes are gonna grow, just as you saw with the state of Illinois. The state of Illinois had a budget surplus because of inflation. We increased the minimum wage. People that were making $7 an hour make $15 an hour. They're gonna pay more taxes on that $15 an hour, and that comes back to our government. Obviously, we can continue to look for grants that help support us. I try to do that all the time. There are public funds that come back to us, but my time goes back to uh, 1970s, and I saw the combined sewers, and the government at that time said that we're gonna help you pay for that. They have not done that. The burden falls back on this as a local economy, and the burden will be here uh, probably for us for uh, many years to come. We have to be part of this. We work at it the best that we can do, but our funds, are, our, our, our economy is stable. When I first became mayor, I demanded and asked the staff, then the council, to uh, d diversify the budget. And that's what we did, and that has made us a stable, financially sound community for over a decade. Thank you, Mr. Captain. The third topic. I'm going to ask you to hold your applause till the end. 
Thank you, Mr. Captain. The third topic is police and public safety, and you will go first. Thank you very much. Um, as I said a number of times at city council meetings, I said it yesterday at a public hearing and a, and a press conference. The mayor's number one job in every community and every mayor that I have talked to is the public safety of its community. The police in the city are rated triple A by people that don't live here. They come in and visited us and reviewed our police department and said they're one of the best that they ever saw. Our public works and fire department are exemplary. Uh, our, when we talk about public safety, I like to broaden the umbrella a little bit. We've started to get into issues that weren't, that weren't an issue for us five or ten years ago. We're looking at lead service lines and the quality of our water. The quality of our water supply has been terrific. The volume of our water has been terrific. But we need to uh, fine tune that. We need to make sure that we can provide safe water for every resident in this city. And I want to say resident, but I want to focus on the children that are here. This is an issue that faces young people more than older people. We need to make sure that we address that as we move forward. The city can provide filters. We're talking about doing that to plug the gap, but we need to remove the service lines. And that's something that we will do over time, but it's gonna take us time to do that. And it's gonna take money to do that. The estimated cost is well over $100 million. And we'll, we'll fund it, we'll try to get funding from uh, state and federal government to do that, but their funds are limited. We need to provide the tools necessary to our fire department, our police department, to be able to meet the demands of their job whether it's uh, 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 access for the fire department and hoses, or it's high-tech equipment for them to do a better job and better communication. We need to work to make the rail system in Elgin safe. I spoke yesterday at a press conference, and I mean this. This city would be in jeopardy if that train derailed in the downtown, and I do not want to be the mayor of a city where the residents have fear of their life. Thank you, Mr. Captain. Uh, Mr. Dixon, the topic is police and public safety. Thank you. Policing in America has changed. Certainly it has changed in the state of Illinois. It has changed in our community. And we have luckily have had some very progressive measures that take place over the last few years. Uh, due to the death of George Floyd, uh, we had some additional conversations about what we can do as a city to make our police department the best that it can possibly be. And we currently have a community policing model that instructs and tells our officers to go out into the community and be a part and be a part of the fabric of the community, which I fully support. There are programs that um, we ha as a council have gone out there to make sure that we support that helps out the children and helps get, keeps kids out of the prison, uh, school to prison pipeline. We're talking about the YEP program, the youth empowerment program that takes mentors from the community and deploys them inside of the high schools to keep those kids off of the street. That is outside of the box thinking. That is not something that's being done everywhere. But when it comes to public safety, public health, we're talking about a lead pipe issue that didn't just get here. This lead pipe issue has been here for decades. And the previous uh, leadership has not done anything about it. We knew that this was going to be an issue. And once it was detected that it was a bigger issue than we had originally found out for it to be, we then began planning. And the plan right now is going to take us multiple years, 10 to 15 years, and $100 million to fix. And we can't afford to allow that time to go forward without doing anything to correct that sooner. Because there are people at risk. There are people at risk right now. Some people can't drink their lead service water. And we have to change that. And we also have to change the process to make sure that everybody gets the filter, everyone has the access to the information that they need in order to keep themselves and their families safe. Thank you, Mr. Dixon. Again, if you'll hold your applause till the end, we'll let you clap all you want. Um, the last topic is your vision for Elgin and what should be included in long-term plans. And Mr. Dixon, you go first this time.
Elgin is a city, my city, that I love. Born here, raised here. I raised my family here, my wife, our three daughters. Um, I just love everything about it. I love everything from the diversity of our city, um, the different demographics from east side to west side, the different amenities that we have on the east side versus the west side. Although I wish, you know, we had some of those same amenities being the Lowers Park pool still open, the east side rec center. I wish those amenities were still open for our west side residents. But when I think about the vision for Elgin, it's not about tomorrow or even the next term. What I'm thinking about is the next 20 years from now. What can we be? It feels like and it looks as though to others outside of this community that we have sometimes have played it safe and we've been coasting. Now, playing it safe is good during really hard times, but at some times, at some point, you gotta strike when the iron is hot. And we as a city have stayed away from taking those risks. I think that Elgin has the unique opportunity being the sixth largest community uh, in the state of Illinois, being perfectly positioned outside of the Chicago land area, uh, having a metro system with three stops, having a pace busing system, having a population of over 115,000 residents in this community, that we are perfectly positioned to take things to the next level. Now, I don't wanna be Naperville. I don't want us to be Geneva. I don't want us to be Algonquin. But we, are, we have all, almost 200 million dollars that are leaving our community every year to go to these other communities to get the restaurants and the shops that this city duly deserves and we have to market to those folks and we have to support our small businesses which hire more people than the larger businesses but we have to be committed we have to have a plan we have to work with our economic development wings to get it done so my vision for Elgin is greater than what we already are and is greater than what we have ever been and I think that with my leadership we can take it to the next level thank you Thank you, Mr. Dixon. We're going to end with Mr. Captain's vision for Elgin and what should be included in long-term plans. Thank you very much. And I guess uh, my vision is a little bit different than Mr. Mr. Dixon's. Um, I learned, of, uh, I guess, my time on city council and uh, being mayor is that sometimes my vision doesn't count. And my vision for, uh, uh, that I've brought to the city council has been voted down, depending on changes in time. I'm looking out at faces out here from all over the world, from, uh, uh, from every, every uh, economic uh, status in this city, and my vision is what your vision is. My vision will be what you see this community needs to be, and that changes day by day, it changes month by month. I see people every day that have learning disabilities. Their vision is different than mine. I see senior citizens that all they wanna do is be able to live their life in comfort and be safe. I think that is important for us. I see people that came here from other countries. They people that walked uh, through swamps from Venezuela to come to the United States. I see people from South, uh, South Asia that moved here from India and Pakistan to be part of this community. I want their vision to be the vision that this community has. And the vision to me is the vision that requires us to look at the American dream. What does it take to be a dream? What does it take to be a dreamer? It's pretty simple. We will look forward to ensure that every resident should have this dream, have an equal opportunity to achieve success and prepare through hard work, determination and initiative to be the best that they can be. I want that for all of us. I want that for all our children. I want all our children to be able to get the best education that they can get. And that is the vision that each one of you will take home to your home tonight. And that vision is my vision for this city for the next four years and into the future. The vision is the eyes of the people that live here, not Dave Captain's eyes. Now let's give him a hand. I want to thank both of our mayoral candidates for participating in this Meet the Candidates Night and giving voters a chance to hear their views. For more information on both candidates, you can check our voter guide on the League of Women Voters website, 
which is lwvelginarea.org. We're going to have a very short recess now while we bring up the candidates for Elgin City Council. So please bear with us. Thank you. Thank you.